Right, so today was the end of the Tour of the Alps, and the question is, is it actually a useful preparation race in terms of predicting who wins? Now, my opinion is no. I actually don't think it has any relevance to the Giro, really. Um, now, if we look back to the previous winners, uh, the last one who won the Giro and won that was Nibali. Like, so basically, Ineos have almost dominated this every year. A couple of years, they haven't. Um, so, like, 2017, Garrett Thomas, he was very strong. He was unlucky um, that, you know, he he didn't win. He obviously crashed into the motorbike. Pino, Sivakov, very strong. Simon Yates, I think, 2021 was when he went to the Giro and then did not do too well, unfortunately. I think he he won a stage, didn't he? But he was not great. He came third overall. So it's kind of a decent predictor. But I think this year, maybe I'm going to eat my words and Tal and Hart's going to win it. But I just don't think it's a great form predictor, mainly because the GC gaps are tiny. Like, within the top 10, it's a minute and a half. And, like, sort of, you know, these top th- six were all about the same all day. So it's kind of like, well, can you actually tell much from it? If you look, like, stage per stage, um, the first stage was basically an uphill sprint, Gagan Hart, Bind, G- uh, Felix Gao. I mean, it's like, there's hardly, like, massive names in it, because this is the thing we're going to get onto, is, like, who's actually present. So even if big names were present, this one, again, Gagan Hart won, but it was, like, a bunch sprint on the top of a climb. Like, there was a group of eight together. I don't want to be rude to people, but, like, it's not the most, like, mental group you've ever seen. Uh, stage three was, like, Again, a summit finish, but it was like 6-7%. Gagan Hart lost no time. Um, Leonard Kemner won from the break. Again, you had about five, six riders all in the same time. Uh, so, yeah, like not the most useful thing. Next stage, break wins, no change on GC. Same with stage five as well. So you just get this final GC and you're like, okay, cool. Like, you know, we know Gagan Hart's going well. But like even Garrett Thomas, like I expect him to get a lot better in the next couple of weeks, is my opinion. He was generally hits his A race as well. But then you think, okay, well, who are we missing? So we go on the start sheet. Obviously, it's not 100%. Well, it's nowhere near complete. But what we can see is that, like, the people we're missing are the two big namers. Obviously, Remco and Primoz Roglic. Now, in my opinion, they're a kind of a different league apart from anyone else. It might sound harsh. Garrett Thomas won the tour. He came third last year. But I just think those two are kind of the guys who are going to be like causing the outcome of this race and no one was so dominant in the outs that makes you think they're on the same level because like let's be honest if Remco or uh, Pro Roglic were on this thing I reckon on that six seven percent climb they would have gained a lot okay the sprints are the sprints whatever and like you can only beat who's in front of you for sure but I just don't think it's like you know made me think oh wow any of these guys will win I think okay they're all what good like maybe top three top five depending on crashes etc but at the end of the day, it's kind of like, well, Senor Remco and Roglic are really the people you've got to watch. And if you look at their season so far, they've been pretty outrageous. Like, Remco, okay, not great in San Juan. UAE won. Catalonia, I mean, is, like, ridiculous. He just bad everyone. He's obviously racing the age, best on the age, and then that's it. And then back to back to altitude before the Giro. So it will be interesting to see what his form is. But he, again, is someone who you would trust to come into good form. And then Roglic, again. Catalonia, they were toe and toe, uh, neck and neck, and Terreno, he also won like three stages, so like what, what, like that's a joke, um, and then he's literally not racing to the Giro, so again, you kind of these things where you're like, well, I just don't know, like, are they good, like these other guys, well, you know, it's hard to say, and if you look at like Tal Gagan Hart's results until this, like kind of, see, uh, this part of the season, Terreno, he was good to be fair, like he finished third, but like he was, if we look on GC, he was not, it was not many miles away off Roglic, but also kind of not one of those people who, he like, did win, lose a sprint, and, like, Hugh Carthy's always come a long way. I guess it's just, like, you know, you expect Roglic to do pretty well, so I think Gagan Hart's obviously looking good. I just don't think it's, like, a massive form indicator um, that, you know, he's going to destroy people um, due to him winning the Tour of the Alps. I think we've seen in the past that this maybe is not the race that has the best predictive outcome uh, for the winner of the Giro d'Italia.